Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. And let us begin this celebration of the Eucharist on this Resurrection Sunday in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Though Christ is risen from the dead by our actions and our behavior, many of us are still in the tomb. We are still buried. But Christ has been risen. And so be, as we prepare our hearts to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant that we who keep the solemnity of Christ's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee. Uh, after John had been preaching baptism, God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to every he, everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen. Not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell him that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead, it is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. The stone which the builders rejected 
has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord. the Paschal victim offers sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the Lamb, and Christ the undefiled has sinners to his father. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark. 
when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together. But the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following now, came up and went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Till that moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Indeed, Christ is risen. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Interesting gospel reading according to John. And I'm drawn to verse 8 of that particular chapter that tells us, Then the other disciple also went in, and he did what? He saw and he believed. A few weeks ago, I watched a movie on Netflix entitled Victim Number Eight. The movie narrates the events of a terrorist attack that killed eight persons in Bilbao, Spain, allegedly by a young Muslim. The only person who was never convinced from the very start of the movie to the end of the movie that the young Muslim man did not commit the crime was his mother. She never wavered in her conviction. Eventually, it was discovered in the movie that a wealthy and influential family of victim number eight bribed Spanish intelligent personnel to organize the attack framed the Muslim young man in order to kill the eighth victim, the heir of the family fortunes. Beloved in Christ, I found this movie interesting and the mother even more interesting because you and I live in a culture in which many of us are like rats jumping off a sinking ship. Or as the other saying goes, when the heat in the kitchen gets hot, many of us run. We do not possess loyalty and faithfulness to a cause or to a person. Come what may, we jump from pillar to post. Today's narrative of John recalls the weakness of the empty tomb of Jesus of Nazareth and it invites us to reflect on the beloved disciple's response when he went in and when he saw the empty tomb, he saw and he believed. You see, beloved in Christ, in the Mediterranean culture in which John lives and which John is writing, Faith describes primarily loyalty and commitment to another person. That's what faith is for them. And so a faithful person is a reliable person, one who manifests enduring personal loyalty 
and personal faithfulness no matter what. Faith is like a social gorilla glue that binds people together, that binds someone and commits someone to a cause. And so persons who manifest faith in the context of the Mediterranean culture can always be relied upon to be with you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. For richer, for until death do us part. That's what faith means. And so this is the meaning, this is the understanding of faith for that John the Evangelist intends to communicate right through his gospel. So writing during a time of the 90s AD when the Christian community lived in a hostile world when there was intense persecution against Christians, the Christians were evicted from the synagogues and the temple. The community was deeply concerned about loyalty, about solidarity, about cohesiveness. The need for such enduring loyalty to Jesus is evident throughout John's gospel. When John frequently uses the word faith and belief, for example, in John chapter 6, 44, John says, has Jesus saying, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him. In John chapter 15, verse 4, Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't live in darkness. So beloved in Christ, John, who came to the empty tomb because of his intense loyalty and faithfulness to Jesus, when he went in, he saw and he believed. John exhibited a different response to the experience of Mary Magdalene who thought there was a thief who had stolen the body. A different response from Peter who apparently did not conclude anything. John saw and John believed. John saw disturbing and troubling evidence. He saw an empty tomb, no body, no corpse. He saw the abandoned wrappings, and yet he remained loyal no matter what. And so despite the absence of heavenly messengers such as an angel, John's faith, John's loyalty, enabled him to believe. And so, beloved in Christ, on this Easter Sunday, as we reflect on John's faith, what is the missionary challenge that is given to you and I? The missionary challenge I would wish to frame in the form of a question. How can you and I see and experience troubling and disturbing signs in our ministry, in our vocations, in our priesthood, in our marriage, in our commitment. How can we experience these disturbing and troubling signs and yet remain committed to Jesus come what may? The first, beloved in Christ, is that the resurrection teaches us that though darkness that climaxes in death is a reality in the human journey, darkness and death is not the final chapter of the book of life. Light always conquers darkness. The sun will always come out tomorrow. Day always follows night and therefore resurrection follows death. 
beloved in Christ. We must always anticipate moments of darkness in our lives. We must always anticipate hostility, oppositions, failure, despair, and desolation in the Christian life. We must anticipate it. Let us not fool ourselves, beloved in Christ, to believe that the Christian life is a constant zessa party or carnival fete. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead reminds us that God, the light of the world, has the last say. And that is why Ignatius of Loyola, Loyola teaches in his spiritual exercises that when you are experiencing desolation, always anticipate consolation. So if you are therefore experiencing in this current pandemic, for example, an extension of the night, an extension of darkness, faith reminds us to remain loyal to Jesus Christ for a new day is dawning. The second lesson that the resurrection teaches us, beloved in Christ, is our waiting for a new day, our waiting for a new, for the, for, for the day to come, for new light, must not be a passive waiting, but it must be an active waiting. We must model the life of Mary Magdalene, who, what did she do, and the other women? They woke up early the next morning and did what? Went to the tomb. They did not sleep in their beds. They did not give in to depression and choose to sleep in. They got up. So beloved in Christ, while we await the dawn of a new day, let us utilize our time, our talent, and our treasures to visit the tombs of the living, persons who are living in hopelessness and despair. Let us constantly encounter and accompany those who are living in their tombs. I had a very moving experience several weeks ago when I participated and helped out in a crusade organized by the Eternal Light community in a sea lot three. And they had this crusade in a, an abandoned warehouse. So when they started the crusade, uh, just a handful of people were there. People trickled in, people trickled out, people passed by, people were nonchalant. But by the time we got to, towards the end of the crusade, beloved in Christ, and uh, Debbie DeRosa invited all the men to come in so that we could pray for them, I was amazed to see the scores of men who responded to the invitation to come in for us to pray with them. And she invited them to, to form a circle. And maybe about 40 or 50 men came and they formed in a circle and we prayed for them. And then she invited the women to join the circle and then the children to join the circle and then the pregnant mothers to join the circle. And we ended up with perhaps 100 persons who came for prayer. There are many persons living in their tombs who are looking for Christians like you and I, resurrection persons, to encounter them. Very frequently I encounter persons at the supermarkets on the street who tell me that during the darkness of the lockdown, it was the voice of Archbishop Jason Gordon through the media that kept their, that kept their faith alive. So we should not be passively waiting. We should be going out and try to encounter persons who are living in their darkness in their tombs. And so beloved in Christ, through our loyalty to Jesus, let us not allow darkness to consume us, but let us allow the light of the resurrected Christ to strengthen our faithfulness 
strengthen our loyalty so that we will not become like rats jumping off a sinking ship or running out of the kitchen when it gets hot. But come what may, like the mother of this Muslim young man, remain committed and steadfast and convicted. Let us remain faithful, let us remain loyal, because we are a resurrection people. Amen, amen, amen. Beloved in Christ, let us stand as we, on this Easter Sunday, renew our baptismal promises, our baptismal promise to remain faithful and loyal and committed to Christ, come what may. And so I ask you to respond to these questions by saying strongly and firmly, I do. Do you renounce Satan? and all his works, and all his empty promises? I do. do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do believe. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and now bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now we will sprinkle you with the water that was blessed at yesterday's liturgy.
so pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, that at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again, until
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious the grant peace in our days, that, that, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Come, share with one another now a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the tomb Bearers of news She would hear soon Did the grass sing Did the earth rejoice To feel you again Over and over Like a trumpet
us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And thank you, choir, for being helping us celebrate so beautifully this, this resurrected life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And thank you all for joining us here this morning. Thank you for those who join us through the media. Indeed, we celebrate. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is our hope. Amen? Amen. Let's give him a round of applause for this mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you. When you're leaving today, please be careful um, not to get too close to one another. We have another mass after, so if people would like to use the back door there, any of the doors through the coffee shop, so that you can get out and thank you. And celebrate Easter, celebrate Christ, our hope is risen. Hallelujah. And remember, enjoy your lunch. Praise God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and uh, in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Easter feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit on those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The mass is, the mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.